Today we're going to learn 10 things drummers should do to prepare for a music video. How's it going guys? My name is Nicola. I'm a drummer from Toronto, Ontario. And today I'm going to show you 10 things that I learned along the way through trial and error how to prepare for a music video. So recently I've been contacted by three different artists to do music videos and I thought that this was a perfect opportunity to demonstrate how I go about doing so. Enough talking, let's go. Step one, know the material. This one might seem kind of obvious, but whether you wrote the drum parts or not, you should know the material well enough where you don't have to think about playing. It should just be automatic. As drummers, we should know to serve the song on the music side of things, but when it comes to a video, it's more so about entertainment or serving the video. So if it's chill, then play chill. If it's a high energy music video, then you know perform your heart out. Step two, only use what you need. So here you can see I'm taking away the ride symbol, the splash, and this effects stack kind of thing because there's none of those in the song. I'm just going for a four up, four down setup, four cymbals and four drums. Step three, clean your drums. Nobody likes to see flaming hot Cheeto dust on their bass drum. I'm just using a hand duster to brush away all the sawdust. Don't forget to clean behind the lugs as well. And some wood chips could be also falling out of the rim side. If your drums look pretty beat up even after you clean them, don't even worry about it. Road rash, battle scars, and relics are pretty badass. IMO. Step number four, fill the drums with a bunch of stuff. The reason for this being, no matter your environment or the location, the drums are always going to be the loudest thing. So you want to make them as dead silent as possible. Check it. You're going to basically want to fill your drums rim to rim to ensure that there's no resonances happening. I use pillows, blankets, towels, clothes, cat, other cat, to get the job done. Now if you have a mic porthole in the resonant side of your kick, or multiple, best cover it with a black cloth to create an illusion of depth. And you won't see a bunch of mismatched clothes. Also pat it down so it looks kind of flush, and then just keep an eye on it every now and then, because every time you hit it with the beater, it might start to pop out. Step 5, new skins. I am endorsed by Attack Drum Heads, but because of COVID shipping restraints, they weren't able to send me coated heads in time for the shoot. So I went ahead and picked up these Evans UV1s. I used these ones in the last shoot because they don't mark up, although I will tape up the logo. Alright, so step number six, polish your cymbals. It's a bit of an eyesore to see broken or cracked cymbals, so I went ahead and got new ones. For cymbal polish, I recommend something like this Peisty one, which works really well. Apply the solution sparingly. In a circular motion, use a cloth to spread it evenly around the cymbal. Use another wet cloth to take off the solution, and then another cloth to dry it. Step number seven, tape up your cymbals. I recommend using gaffer tape to tape up the bottom of your cymbals, like I did for this shoot. The reason for this is because crashes, hi-hats, and cymbals in general are usually the loudest thing in the room. If you do this in a diamond pattern, it usually does the trick. The trick with this is you don't want to put too much tape or else what ends up happening is like when you hit the cymbals, it just kind of like chills there and like you don't want that. Like you just want it to like kind of like, uh, like I don't know, like whatever this is. Like wavy cymbals, I don't know. Step number eight, bring a drum mat like this DW one or any carpet will do. It can be a nightmare if your drum gear is sliding all over the place, so this will help prevent that. And from my experience, not all ground surfaces are going to be perfectly flat, so a rug will help even this out. Step number nine. Don't forget your drumsticks. Even though you're playing fake drums, your sticks can still break. And if you don't have enough pairs with you, it's going to be bad. So make sure you're all stocked up. And finally, number 10. I kept this one to the end because I feel like this is kind of the most important, is in-ears. So headphones like this Audio Technica one here doesn't always look the best in a video. So I recommend going with in-ears. So I use these Shure SC215 Sound Isolation in-ears. I also have a backup pair as well. Now, if you're using your own playback device, such as an iPhone, you might need to use one of these dongles. This is a lightning to 3.5 millimeter headphone adapter. And also I recommend this Belkin Rockstar, which is the exact same thing, but it has the addition of a charging port. Now, this is a great solution because it can block out any sort of environmental noise that's happening on set. Yo, can you turn off the song just a little bit, just so I can hear oh. it better? Yeah. I know it's pretty fucking loud already, but <laughs> at this point, I gotta go the clicks. <laughs> and it allows a clear way for you to play along to the song. So once you've done all those steps, pack everything away and double check everything, try and show up on time, be professional, and most importantly, have fun. Um, that's it, that pretty much wraps it up. Let me know if these tips work for you or if you found even better methods, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. If you like this video, wanna see more content like this in the future, please leave a like, subscribe, and turn on that bell notification so you can get notified when I drop new ones. 
That's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next video.